Um, our scripture reading this morning is found in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Okay, well, good morning. good morning. If you're here, just raise your hand. It's you. Everybody's here today. Don't you love the Sabbath? I love the Sabbath. It's a very, very special day. It really, really is. Well, we're, we're glad to be here. The Roy Group, I think they call us the Roy Group. Uh, we've, uh, I introduced uh, Miss Deborah, Miss Deborah Rivera. She's from uh, Cleveland, Tennessee. Okay, and uh, she works with a wildlife rehabilitation. Uh, company and uh, she's also a veterinarian technician and she's actually she's going to show another animal here before too long and I'm traveling with professor Gerald Linderman over there Jerry say hi okay Jerry's a math and science teacher we've been friends for a long time and his son Jake Jake's going to be a, uh, a, a research scientist he's going to go to space aren't you space science this rocket science there we go well we're really happy to be with you today uh, and let's see, I've got, I've got this little button right here. Oh, we've got in, in the beginning, in the beginning. Do you have a favorite book of the Bible? You know, Genesis is my favorite book of the Bible. It's easy to find, but there's a lot in Genesis. You know, there's two uh, worldviews. I don't know what, I think I know which worldview you probably have. One worldview says uh, everything started from nothing. Okay, that's a worldview. Another worldview says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so we're going to spend some time with that. If we don't get that clear, then we're really lost for the rest of the, for the, rest of the Bible, don't we? And then who, who actually created the heavens and the earth? You know, if we go to John and we read, it, we read what it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, so the word was, who was the word? Jesus, that's right. Jesus is the word. A friend of mine who is uh, now a retired pastor, when he was in high school, uh, he figured out for the first time that the word was Jesus and that Jesus created everything. Now, that's interesting. That really is. And the word was with God, and he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So if something was created, it was created by Jesus. That's interesting, isn't it? He even created things that are invisible. Now, you know that most things are made out of things that are invisible? Did you realize that? I mean, look at the, the pews that we're sitting on. Look at your, look at your hands. Look at, look at your clothes, the building. Most things are made of things that are invisible, and we cannot see them with our normal eye. That's very interesting to me. It really is. And then in John, we also read that, what? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glorious of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And he became flesh the word Jesus became flesh he lived on this planet like you and I are living he lived a perfect life now why did he come to this planet did he come to show us that we could have a good life what was his purpose well there's a couple of purposes right he came to save us from our sins okay we're very very thankful for that he also came to show us what God the father was like now when I read when I read the Bible I am drawn to Jesus you can't read without being drawn to Jesus, because what is he showing us? He's showing us his what? His mercy, his faithfulness. OK, 
okay? And his salvation that he offers us, we're drawn to him. So he's showing us what God is like. So that's what God is like. Remember, one of the disciples came up and they said, show us the Father. And he says, Have you, I've been with you all this time, and you don't know what the Father's like? He's just like him. He's just like him. That's very, very interesting to me as we go on. Then it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then what happened? And it says, let there be light. How many have ever made light? Have you ever made light? Anybody make light? We know what we can do in order to get light, don't we? Okay, you know, that sounds like we could shoot. We're going to do a few experiments this morning, and they all have a spiritual application, and I hope that you enjoy that. So let's see what we got right here. You know what I need? I need my first Vic volunteer. So oh, would you like to help me? That's the first hand that I saw. Okay, come on up. Come on. Let's see. Uh, how can we, where can we see? What do we have here for, uh, yeah. I think we have maybe more room over there. Okay, why don't you meet me over there? <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, way over there on the other side of the table. We don't have a whole lot of room up here. So let me just go over here and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna be over here with you as well. Hey, would you like to put on a pair of safety glasses? I thought you might want to do that. Let me move my little bird. Now, what I have in my hand right here is I've got some, uh, this is a, a test tube and I got some liquid in there. What does that look like? Looks like water. Are you thirsty? No, okay, good, because you can't drink that. These are chemicals and we normally don't drink chemicals. Hang on to the top of that with one of your hands. There you go. I've got another one. This kind of looks like Kool-Aid or Gatorade or something. You can't drink that either, okay? Because it's chemicals. Hang on to this one as well. Let's see, move over just a little bit so you're away from the table and turn just so, so everybody can see your hands. Now we're gonna have her mix those chemicals together to see if she can come up with a, a chemical reaction maybe, okay? And that's gonna be kind of pretty, but we're gonna give you a countdown before you do it, okay? Are you ready? Yeah, you can pour that one into there. I'm gonna hold this paper towel underneath just we don't want to spill it. Okay, are you ready? Let's give her a countdown, shall we? Here we go. Three, two, and then one, and pour it right in there. She's being very careful. Pour it all in, pour it all in. Whoa! And I'll take the empty one and hold that one up for us. Hold that up for us. What did she make? Did she make light? <laughs> yes, she did. You made a beautiful light. That is so cool. Have you ever made light before? No, you did it today on Sabbath. How cool is that? Do you think that's how Jesus made light? Think he, no, think he mixed a bunch of chemicals together? What did, you know, the verse says what? He said, he said, have you, ever, have you ever made things by talking? You know, sometimes we can make a mess for ourselves, can't we, by talking? We really can. But he said, let there be light, and there was light. You know, our creator God, Jesus, is so powerful, he can create just by speaking. Now, that is amazing to me. Let me take it from your hand right here, and let's take a look at it. You see, it's a little clear down there. It's clear. What color do you see there? Yeah, kind of blue, purple. That's right. And at the top, it almost looks like it's pink, isn't it? But you know, that's because some of the chemicals aren't mixed thoroughly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake it up and down, and we might be able to get these chemicals to go to a higher energy level. Shall we try it? Okay, it's kind of pretty when that happens. So how about a countdown? Are we ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's shake it up and down and see. Oh yeah, it went to a higher energy level, didn't it? That is amazing. Thank you for making light for us. Wow, hey, that's interesting. And I'll take my glasses right there. There you go. And you can go and meet them and sit down right over there. Now, this is going to run out of energy. Have you ever run out of energy? No hands. Okay, yes, a few of us. Now we run out of energy. This is gonna run out of energy too. It only has a certain amount of chemical energy and it's going to run out. Interesting, isn't it? But you know, God gives us energy, doesn't he? He gives us energy for life every day. He gives us life, he gives us breath, and we owe our life to him, don't we? We really do. Now that is interesting. So let's go on further. This is, this is Earth's first day, Earth's first day. Cool, let's go on, here we go. And it says, then it says, let the, I've got a, I can almost, I can almost see that, okay? There's just a glare from where I'm sitting right here. And let the what? Can you read it? Oh, I got it back there. 
Okay, I can't see that either. It's all, it's all washed up for me. That's okay, and I can get that on my Bible. But we're talking about the firmament, okay? We're talking about the air. Now, that's interesting. Are you breathing air today? Don't you like air? Now, air is very, very special, isn't it? Now, but, you know, we don't realize how heavy the air really is. Air is really quite heavy. And at sea level, it weighs about 14.7 pounds per square inch. I've got a little air bar right here. Let's see. Somebody want to help me with this air bar? Would you help me? Okay, this is great. Okay, you can stand right over here. You, you played the piano for us today, didn't you? That was so nice. Thank you very much. Hey, put your hand out like this. I'm going to put that air bar right on your head. Hold this with your other hand so it doesn't bump you on the head. Is that a little bit heavy? Does it have weight? It does. Does air have weight? You think air has weight? Put your hands out, you guys. Can you feel how heavy the air is? I can't feel how heavy it is with my hand, but she's feeling how heavy the air is in her hand because that's one cubic centimeter right there, and it's pushing down. And every cubic centimeter of our bodies right now weighs the same as that iron rod. Isn't that interesting? So we have a couple of thousand pounds of air pressure pushing down and around us all the time but we can't feel it. Aren't you glad you can't feel all that pressure pushing in around you? I'm really glad too. Hey, thanks for helping me hold that. Thank you. Yeah, it hurts, doesn't it? It's heavy, this is heavy, but air does have weight. Have you ever had your ears hurt because of air pressure? Maybe you go up on a hill or you go down and maybe you're flying in an airplane and, you, and your ears get pressure on it, but we don't feel that pressure on our skin usually. Now, the air does have weight. What, is, what gives air weight, do you think? What gives air weight? Okay, yeah, it's gravity. It's the same thing that gives us our weight. In fact, I brought some heavy air. Now, we're breathing air. Most of the air that you and I breathe, breathe is, made what, is made out of what? What is most of the air that we're breathing made out of? Nitrogen, nitrogen. there you go. <laughs> it's nitrogen. About 78% of the air that we're breathing is nitrogen. About 21% happens to be oxygen. We've got to have oxygen in order for us to have life. And then if we add those two up, we get what? 99% of all the air is a combination, a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. The 1% that's left over mainly is a gas that we call argon. We can't live off of argon, but we use it in industry too, don't we? Well, what I have right here is I've got some heavy gas. We have a balloon right here, and this balloon has heavy air gas in it. If I hold it up like this and let it go, well, we know it's heavy air gas because the balloon falls down, doesn't it? Have you ever seen a helium balloon? What do helium balloons do? They fly, don't they? And we have to, we have to tie a string onto it, otherwise it's gonna go up into the atmosphere someplace. Well, this is very heavy air gas. It's a special kind of gas that we call SF6 gas. It's sulfur hexafluoride gas. And in fact, if our air weighed the same as this air that I have in my balloon right here, we would be a little bit different because we would sound a little bit different. What happens when people breathe a light gas like helium? What happens to their voice? It goes way up high, doesn't it? Okay, so what do you think would happen if we breathe a heavy gas? Is it gonna go high or is it gonna go low? We can go low, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna breathe some of this. It's non-toxic. You know what non-toxic means, don't you? You know what non-toxic means? Yes, it means it just won't kill you right away. That's what it means. <laughs> it's, harm it's harmful, it's not harmful, okay. So I'm gonna take some of this, I'm gonna breathe it. Now, see if my voice changes because I'm gonna be breathing now a heavy gas from this purple balloon. All right, so here we go. First, I have to get rid of some of the air in my lungs. Yeah, now I just breathe the heavy air gas, and so my voice has changed just a little bit because that gas is really, really heavy. Did you notice that my voice changed a little bit? Did you notice that? I noticed it too. That's interesting. Now, how would you like to have your voice sound like that? Would you like to have your voice sound like that? You know, it wouldn't be good if our voices, all of our voices sounded like that. You wouldn't know who was talking to you because everyone would sound pretty much the same. Interesting. Well, but God didn't, Jesus didn't create air that heavy because each one of us has a unique voice pattern. Everybody has their own voice. Did you know that? Everybody that has ever lived on planet Earth has their own voice print. Interesting. What else do you have that's unique? 
Our fingerprints are unique. So Jesus didn't make another person just like you. There is nobody in the entire world that has ever lived in the world history just like you. We are so special to God. We really are. There isn't another you. I love that about God. That is amazing to think about. Hey, let's go on. So we have our atmosphere, the air, and we're very, very glad that we don't breathe a very, very heavy air gas. So we use that heavy air gas in industry. They use it in transformers, and it's a very good electrical insulator. That's very interesting. If that balloon was the same size as a basketball, it would weigh the same as a basketball. That's amazing. Let's go on right here. Now we have the third day. What happened on the third day? What do we have? You can respond. It's fine. Plants? Do we have plants? We have plants. Don't we need plants? In fact, that was the, that was the natural diet, wasn't it? Everybody, everybody, all the plants. Everybody ate plants. Everybody ate animals. I mean, did everybody eat animals? No, everybody ate plants, okay? Everyone ate plants. The animals ate plants and the people ate plants. That was the third day. The evening in the morning was the third day. And let's go on. And what do we end up with right here? So the evening and morning was the fourth day. And let there be what? There was lights. There were lights in the heaven. That's interesting to me. So light. Where do we get light from? You know, Jesus is light. God is light. Isn't that interesting? God came to this world to bring light to this world because this world is full of darkness. Now, everybody, uh, let's see, we need some light. So you know what we could do? Oh, you know what? Okay. Uh, I thought I brought the sun in, but I didn't bring the sun in. No, no problem. No. Okay. So we have the sun. The sun gives us light, doesn't it? It gives us light, it gives us energy, it gives us heat, it gives us light. And that's exactly what we need. And that's the fourth day. The evening and the morning was the fourth day of creation week. Cool. Let's go on further. What happened on the fifth day? Do we have all the birds and the water animals, okay, on the, on the fifth day? All of these animals on the fifth day. Now, you know, Miss Deborah has a very special animal that she wants to show you. And you may have seen this animal around because they are in North America. And, no, oh, they're not in North America. Oh, not that one. No. Okay, it's only in Iowa. <laughs> I wonder what it is. You know what it is? This is a very special animal. Oh, I know what animal that is. For a minute, I thought you had your other animal in there. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know either. I don't know it either. Look at that animal. Okay, let me see if I can get him to let go. This is a very interesting animal. Does anyone know what this is? What kind of lizard? Does anyone know what kind of lizard it is? What? Nope. Anybody else? <laughs> they get underneath their throat that gets dark and it puffs out and it looks like a, it's a bearded dragon. <laughs> and these guys come from Australia. Um, there's eight different kinds of bearded dragons. And this particular kind comes from a uh, central part of Australia. So it's a more dry, hot area. Um, this is Steve. He was a rescue. A little boy had him and he wasn't taking care of him. So I got him. And um, he, uh, he has, a, you guys probably can't see it, but he has a third eye on top of his head. A lot of reptiles have that. It helps them regulate their body temperature. It helps them to see light and darkness. They can't see pictures like our eyes can see. Um, it just kind of keeps them from getting too hot or too cold. When he, um, when he gets really cold and I take him out in the sun, he'll, he'll get really dark. And then if he doesn't need as much heat, then he'll lighten up. Um, when they have the black beard, which is starting to get a little, he's a little irritated with me right now. Um, but they don't, they'll puff it out when they're irritated or they're trying to scare something off. He's got like uh, little projectiles on his side and right now they don't hurt, but if he gets angry, they'll puff out, he'll get flat. And these things feel kind of like thorns on a rose bush. Um, they, uh, they, they are um, on our sleep schedule. So he sleeps at night like I do. And he has to have a heat source in his cage so that he doesn't get too cold. 
but he has to have an area that he can get a little cooled off if he needs to. Um, these guys run about nine miles an hour and he lives in the desert area. So the ground gets really, really hot. So when he wants to, when it's too hot, he'll get on his hind legs and he'll run across the desert so his belly doesn't get burned. Um, he eats uh, lots of leafy greens, fruits, some different vegetables. As a baby, they eat more insects, but he doesn't like insects. I get them every once in a while just because I think he might want them, but he usually just keeps them in his tank and I hear crickets in my house all the time. So um, <laughs> these guys like to be held. So if you want a lizard, this is a really good beginner lizard. They're easy to take care of. Some lizards don't like to be handled. Um, he likes to be held. Um, when they're babies and uh, another, like a bearded dragon, an older one comes by and they wanna make friends or they wanna say, hey, I don't want any problems, they'll wave at them. So they look like they're, they're making friends with each other. So, but this is Steve the bearded dragon. That's awesome. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? What an awesome animal. <laughs> Wow. When I'm in the desert, I, I run on my two legs yeah, too. Probably do. Keep my belly from yeah, burning. I think you do. That's an amazing Georgia. thing. Who made who made the bearded dragon? You know, Jesus made the bearded dragon. He made the family of animals that that animal came from. Oh, that, there's almost 5,000 different kinds of lizards. 5,000 different kinds of lizards. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. I love that. I love to study all of those animals. And, you know, the birds too. Now, you know, we could make something fly like birds fly. How many have ever flown? Have you ever flown? Anybody flown? Okay. Well, you guys need to get out more. Okay. We need to fly. Jerry's a, Jerry's a pilot. Okay. So let's see what we got right here. Actually, what we're going to do, we're going to try to fly something that uh, we normally don't see fly, but we're going to use the principle of flight. Have you ever seen a screwdriver fly? Have you ever seen a screw? Okay. Okay. Actually, we're going to fly it by using some air. So we have to have air to fly in. Okay, so we're going to turn this on. I have a vacuum. We've never vacuumed anything with it because it's clean inside. We're going to blow a lot of air over the top of the screwdriver, see if we can fly it. And that should be fun if we can do that. So let's try it. Not flying very well. Okay, so we're going to, we're actually going to need some more air pressure. So how do we get more air pressure? Well, I'm going to add a little nozzle to it. And so we're going to add a nozzle. A nozzle will increase the pressure, the air pressure. And so let's see what we got right here. You know, rockets have uh, nozzles because that increases that pressure. Let's see if we can fly the screwdriver now. Let's check it out. Let's see what we got. There we go. Oh, oh. And there goes my screwdriver. There goes my screwdriver. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. So, you know, when Jesus created all the birds, you know, the birds have to have the right shaped wings in order to fly. They have to have the, the, the right number of flight feathers in order to fly. And, the, and everything just has to be right in order for those birds to fly. And that's the principle of flight. In fact, we have a bird up here. We're going to talk about him just a little bit later. I'm glad that Jesus created all of those lovely, lovely birds. I am. That was the fifth day. The evening in the morning was the fifth day. And then what happened? Then God said, let us make what? Make man in our own image. You know, you and I are made in the image of God. There's a lot of what we do that is in the image of God. That's interesting. And then God said, he said that he's given every herb of the tree that you yield seed and on the face of the earth. So everything was given food, okay? And we'll go on. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. So how many days of creation have we covered? Six days, evening and morning, evening and morning. So it's a 24-hour period of time, okay, according to Genesis. Interesting. And then what happened? You know, uh, sometimes people think that the days were like a week at a time was a day. One day was a week or one day was a million years or a hundred thousand years. But we know that it's just one day, 24 hour period of time. How many days was Jonah the great fish? Was it three days? That's what the Bible says. It's three days. It wasn't 3,000 years or three million years. It was three days. We don't have any problem with that. We shouldn't have any problem with that early morning and evening being first or second day or third day during creation. And what are we made out of? Well, almost 99% of the mass of our body is made up of those six elements. We have oxygen and carbon and hydrogen and nitrogen, and calcium and phosphorus. 
We have all of these things are in our body. Where did we get these elements from? Are we created from the dust of the ground? Was, was Adam created from the dust of the earth? Well, where do we get our, where do we find our elements? We find our elements in the ground, okay? That's one easy way of explaining to every generation from the beginning of time that we are made out of elements from the ground, okay? Everybody can understand that, that's interesting. And we get our elements from our food too when we eat, don't we? We've got those elements and our body has to maintain that balance, okay? And Adam and Eve was here on planet earth for a very, very special time. They had a special garden. They had a very special garden and there was a tree. Actually, there was two trees in the garden. There was a tree of life. You remember that, right? Tree of life. What was the name of the other tree? What did they call it? Tree of knowledge of what? Of good and evil. That's right. And you know, God told them, Adam and Eve, he said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, do not eat of that tree. It was a test. It was a test. Have you and I ever been tested? Like every day, <laughs> are we tested every day that we're going to obey God and do what he wants us to do? I think we do. Well, Adam and Eve failed that test, didn't they? They ate of that tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's interesting to me. It really is. And then that's where we come up with what? That was the first sin. Okay, that was the first sin. And that separated them from God. And they were driven out of the Garden of Eden. Can our sins ever be forgiven? Can you say yes? Can you say yes? Yes, our sins can be forgiven. So how does that really work? Well, let's see what we got. There was a plan of salvation, okay, that God had. And I'm going to use this little piece of paper right here. I'm going to write a three-letter word. The first letter is S. The last letter is an N. I wonder what's in the middle. What do you think? I, you're exactly right. There you go. So you and I are in the middle of this thing, right? We're in the middle of this thing called sin. So if this paper represents sin, how can I get rid of it? Because we want to get rid of our sins, don't we? I mean, I want to get rid of my sins. What can we do in order to get rid of this paper? Just throw it away? I could throw it away. Did I get rid of it? You know, there's no such place as away. Did you know that? I'm away from home. How many of you are away from home today? Are you away from home? Or do you live right here in the church? We're all away. We didn't disappear just because we're away. There's no such place as away. So how can we really get rid of this? You can't throw it away because it's someplace else. How can we get rid of it? Burn it. There you go. Wait, how many are pyromaniacs in here? Really? Okay. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to burn the paper because we want it to disappear. So I'm going to put my safety glasses on and we have a little match right here. And let's see what we can do. Could you, should you have matches by yourself? Say no. 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 Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a match. You should be with your parents, your teachers, or your guardians, okay, or the pastor. And I'm going to light this match. I'm going to pick up this paper with my tongs, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to burn this paper. And we're going to make this paper disappear because it represents our sins. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want them to be gone. Look at the paper. The paper is disappearing. Is the paper disappearing? Is it disappearing? It's all gone? Is it, is it all gone? Is it going away? It's going to vanish in front of your eyes? It's burning up, isn't it? I can feel the heat. I can feel the heat from that paper. And it's almost all, all burnt. It's still burning. Got a little edge over here to burn up right here. And almost there. And that's going to be the end of the flames. The paper is gone, isn't it? No. The paper's not, you know what happens? You know what happens when you and I confess our sins? You know, what the, you know what the devil does? Satan is a liar, isn't he? He's a cheater. He's a liar. What he says is you can never be forgiven. He puts doubt in our minds that we can ever be forgiven of our sins. Now, that is a trick that he plays on us. Because when you and I confess our sins, then God will forgive us of our sins. First of all, we have to be sorry for our sins. Have you ever had somebody like your parents tell you that you had to tell somebody that you were sorry? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. You know, even when you're not sorry, you still have to do that. Okay. Well, it doesn't work with God because when we're sorry for our sins, we have to be really sorry for our sins. Then we need to turn away from our sin. And God says that your sins are forgiven. He won't even remember them anymore. So when Satan puts doubt in your mind that your sins are too terrible and you can never be forgiven, 
don't believe him because he's a liar. He's a cheat. You can't trust him at all. So let's see, how can we, how can we demonstrate that? I have another piece of paper. I'm going to put those three letter words down here, S-I-N. I'm going to take a match and I'm going to burn this piece of paper up. Okay. And I love this because this paper is going to disappear in front of your very eyes. Are you ready? Okay, we don't blink because this happens in a hurry. Let's go ahead and light our match. Let's get our paper going right here. How about a countdown? Three, two, one. Let's burn our paper. Let's go. Whoa, where did the paper go? Where did the paper go? It's gone. And that's exactly what happens to your sins and my sins. When we ask forgiveness, they are gone. God won't even remember them anymore. They're gone. Aren't you glad for that? I am so glad. So the next time when the devil says, no, you can never be forgiven, don't believe him. He's a cheater. He's a liar. And he's not telling you the truth. He likes to fool us. Have you ever been fooled? Say yes. <laughs> yes, we've all been fooled to some extent. Let's see what I've got right here. I've got a couple of arcs right here. Let's see what we got. I need somebody to help me hold an arc. Okay, okay, what, yeah, why don't you come up? Oh, there you go. And can, can you take one of your hands and hold it like this from the top? Now, if we had a bunch of arcs, what could we make? Circle. We could make a circle because we can take a circle, cut it up into little arcs, and we could have a circle again. But I have a red one and I have a yellow one. If I put the red one underneath the yellow one, which one appears to be longer? Which one appears to be longer? Red. The red one appears to be longer. So here, here we go. What I'm going to do is here, here, grab a hold. Whoop, hang on. I'm just dropping everything. All right, let's put it back over here. Hold this with two hands. Okay, and let's go ahead and go ahead. Oh, can you hold it with two hands? No, you can stay there. No, I mean, two hands down there. And just pull and stretch it. We're going to stretch the yellow one out. We want to make it longer. Okay, oh, there you go. Jerked it right out of my hand. Okay, so I'm going to hold this one at the top. You put this below it. Which one appears to be longer now? The yellow one. Did we make it longer? Did we really? Hey, I wonder if they're the same size. Why don't you make a sandwich out of them? Take both of them, make a sandwich out of them, line them up and turn them around so we can see, turn it over, keep going. Turn. Look at that, they're the same size. But one looks like it's longer than the other one when you put one above the other one. Here, why don't you take, take the yellow one, hold it up like we had. I'm gonna put the red one like this. Which one appears to be longer? Which one? Red. The red one. Okay, I'm going to trade with you. You take the red one. Okay, hold it up this way like the yellow one was. Hold it that way. I'm going to hold this one like this one, which appears to be longer. Yellow. The yellow one. We'll make up your mind. <laughs> but we know what? We know that they are what? We know that they are the same size. Put them together again. Make a sandwich out of them. They are exactly the same size. Well, we know that our eyes can play tricks on us, right? That's what we call an optical what? An illusion, that's right. Can somebody play tricks on your ears from what you're hearing? Yes, they can. Can somebody play tricks on, on what we smell? Yes, we can. What about what we taste? Can you play tricks on somebody's taste? Yes, we can. What about what we touch and feel? Can we play tricks on somebody that can touch and feel? Yes, we can. So all of our senses can be tricked. And you know what? The devil likes to trick us by using our five senses in order to trick us. Hey, I don't want to be tricked. Do you want to be tricked? No, I don't want to be tricked. Hey, thanks for helping me do this. That's interesting, isn't it? So what do we, how do we tell what's really real? Well, what we do is we try to use all of our five senses in order to try to figure out what is really real. Now, when it comes to some other things, what we do is we go to the Bible and the Bible will help us to understand what is really real and what is really false. So that's very interesting. So we need to remember that. Hey, let's go on further right here. And so, and so what happened right here? The Lord saw the wickedness of man. It was great on the earth and that every intent and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. Wow, these people were really, 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 really bad. Now, um, you don't have to raise your hand. I will. How many have ever done something bad? I'm going to raise my hand. I've done something. I mean, you don't have to. This is not a confession time. But, uh, you know, but these people were what? They were continually bad. I've never been continually bad. Okay, these people were terrible. And so what was God going to do? What was he going to do? He said he was going to what? He was going to wipe them out. He was going to wipe them. He was going to destroy man, okay? And all the, all the, both man and beasts and creeping things and the birds of the air. But who found grace in the eyes of the Lord? 
Noah. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. We even have songs about Noah, don't we? We really do. And then God said he was going to build a what? He wanted Noah to build what? A what? An ark. That's right. Hey, we got an ark up here, and it's kind of buried through all of this over here. Hey, let's get our ark out. Let's get our ark out. There we go. We got our ark. Here's our ark right here. Okay, and let's see. Oh, 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 hang on. I just hit something. I'm going to put this down on the table, okay, so we can look, we can look at our ark right here. He said that he was going, he, he wanted Noah to build an ark. You know, the ark was really, really big. The ark had to be big because it had to hold what? All the people, all the animals, all the food, okay, all the water, everything that they, that they needed. And it was going to be what, about 510 feet long? That's about a football field and a half. That's really, really big. 85 feet wide and height is about 45 feet high. And there was going to be how many doors in it? We have that black thing on the side right here. One door. There's only one door. Would you feel safe in the sanctuary this morning if there was only one door? No, I wouldn't feel safe. If you had an emergency, man, you want to go out and exit. You really wanted to go out. There was only one door, okay? In order to be saved in the ark, you had to go through that one door. Now, that's interesting. So, and it had three, elect, uh, three decks, lower and upper and middle deck. And that's what we call a bathtub ark. You think it looked like that? It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work at all. Now, Jesus gave... Jesus gave Noah the plans for the ark. It was the most important ship that has ever been built in time. And I think it was a very, very high tech ship indeed. Now, do you think that they had steel and bronze during the time of Noah? Did they have those? Did they have that? No, say yes. <laughs> yes, they did. They actually did. We find fossilized uh, hammers with steel that we can't figure out how in the world they actually made that steel because we're having a hard time making it today. And uh, there was, uh, this is all the information about that, about that, about that hammer. And we don't have time to go into that this morning, but God gave Noah the plan for the ark. And in fact, somebody built a replica life-size uh, ark in Kentucky. Anybody been there? Anybody seen that? Oh, really? That's fantastic. Isn't that amazing to see that? Interesting. It's the world's biggest freestanding timber structure in the world right now. It's interesting, over 3 million board feet of lumber, and it's very, very interesting to see. And here it is. Did they have metals? One of Lamech's wives, Zillah, bore a son, Tublicane, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And this was at the time of Noah. I like that. They did have metals. And it was a worldwide flood, by the way, and we have some fossils that we, that we find. Now, in order for a fish to be swallowing a fish, what had had to happen? The death of those fishes had to be instant, and all the conditions were just right in order for that to get that fossilized print. Interesting. Now, what about the lifespans of all these people? Well, from Adam till, you can see Noah up in there, all the way from Adam till, uh, till actually it goes down to Abraham is about 2,000 years. And from Abraham's time to Jesus' time on this earth, that's about another 2,000 years. And from Jesus' time until now, it's approximately another 2,000 years. So we've got approximately 6,000 years in our world's history. Interesting. And then he's going to bring a flood waters on the earth to destroy uh, everything from under the heavens, all the flesh in which there is breath of everything that was going to be on the earth. Do you think there were dinosaurs on the ark? No. Say yes. yes. You know, who made the dinosaurs? Jesus created everything. He created, he created the dinosaurs. But did they, did, they, did they put the large dinosaurs on the ark? It would take up too much space. You know that the average dinosaur is the size of a sheep? That's right. The average size of a dinosaur is the size of a sheep. And they wouldn't want large dinosaurs on there because it would take more food, right? More cleanup, more mess, more water, more everything. And so they would take what? They would take the juveniles, right? And then they would grow. In fact, dinosaurs are lizards, aren't they? They're from the lizard, like the lizard family. Is that right, Ms. Deborah? Kind of, okay, <laughs> we'll settle for that. Interesting. And they grow, they grow their lifetime. They grow their lifetime. And, you know, at the time of Noah, you know, Noah lived to be over 900 years. So all of these creatures were living a very, very long period of time. So most likely there were dinosaurs on the ark. And dinosaur is a new word. Did you know that? It was coined in the year 1841. It's a new word, okay? It just means what? It means giant lizard. Interesting. All right, and we do have fossils that we, that we dig up all over, all over the earth, 
all of these uh, fossilized. And in Job, and God is talking to Job, and he says, look at the behemoth. The behemoth was probably referring to a dinosaur, and it eats grass, it strengthens in its hips, its powers in its stomach muscles, it moves its tail like a cedar, bones are like beams of bronze, raging river will not disturb him. Wow, very, very large animals, very, very large animals. And the, the Leviathan, we have all of these uh, things that were mentioned in Job. Interesting. And then all of the animals were supposed to go into the ark. Did Noah go out and find all the animals? No, he didn't. The animals just did what? They came into the ark. I think maybe the angels were directing them and God told them to do that. And every animal of every kind was represented in the ark. All the birds. Oh, so if we all, all you need is two birds in order to get all the birds of the world. There's probably a little over 10,000 different species of birds today, but all you needed in the ark was two birds in order to start that. Isn't that interesting? All the animals of their kind, animals of their kind. How do we classify animals? Here's our classification. We have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And how many of you have a dog? You have a dog at home? Well, the different kinds, the family of dogs that we're talking about, the different kinds would be families, okay? And so all the dogs belong to Canidae, and all the cats belong to the Philidae family. Interesting. So in the dog family, scientists tell us that probably the first two dogs were wolves. Then we get all of the different dog breeds from those wolves today. We have, we have about 400 different dog breeds today in the, in the earth. We've got Great Danes and we got those little, what are those little dogs called? Chihuahuas. And now they came from two dogs because they belong to the same family. And all the animals, they had to go through the countryside in order to get to the, to the ark. And Noah was preaching to people and he said, you know what, it's going to rain. Did the people believe him? Why didn't they believe him that it was going to rain? They had never seen rain before. Now it just it would be just like me telling you today. How many of you know what Jello is? You know what Jello is? Anybody? Yeah. You like Jello? Yeah, it's kind of nice. But if I would tell you today that it was going to, Jello was going to fall out of the sky tomorrow, okay? Would you believe me? Well, you had never seen that before, so why would you believe me? Well, they didn't believe the rain story because it had never rained. Rain water didn't never fall from that sky. So they didn't believe him, but I wonder what they thought about when all those animals came through their yards. Maybe they were thinking and scratching their head. You know, maybe Noah is right. Something is going to happen. These animals are all coming through here. And why would those animals be coming and going through that one door? And those people could have been saved too, but they weren't saved. How would you like to be in that ark? Wouldn't that be fun? How would you like to spend over a year in the ark? They spent over a year in that ark. It was a very busy place a very busy place. And here's the opening of that ark uh, in the ark encounter. Look at all those little people right there. They look like ants. Look how big that ship was, huge, it was huge. They had cages for all the animals. They had to have food supply for all the animals. They had to have water. Somebody had to feed them and they had to water them. They had to have fresh air. <laughs> That's interesting in itself. Wow, and it was a very, very interesting ship. Then they had to have food for themselves. They really, that was a busy place. And it was a worldwide flood. It wasn't just a regional flood. It was a worldwide flood. We find, we find marine fossils all over the earth in the highest, in the highest, on the highest mountains. So all of the earth must have been covered by a worldwide flood. And the people that didn't go into the ark, they had to climb up into the high places and the water came from above, the water came from underneath the earth and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. You know what Jesus tells us in John? He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And he says, I am the door. Remember the door of the ark? Only one door. You had to be saved to get through that one door. Jesus says in John, he says, I'm the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. I don't know about you, but I want to be saved. How do we do that? We go through Jesus. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That's interesting to me. It really, really is. Well, there's a storm. Did the ark have an engine? Did it have a motor? Did it have a steering wheel? No way to steer it. They just had to weather the storm, and the angels probably protected that ark. Have there been uh, shipwrecks in the past? Yes, we have shipwrecks all of the time, and that, that ark didn't wreck at all. It really didn't wreck. And here we have all of these different shipwrecks. What about the size of the ark? Here we have the ark. Then we have the Santa. Remember the Santa Maria? Remember, remember the Remember Columbus? Remember that story? Yeah, all that history. Well, the ark was what? It was a little bit bigger than the Wyoming. And then we have the Titanic was bigger. 
and Queen Mary was bigger. I've been on the Queen Mary, and that's a huge ship. But Noah spent all that time in the ark, and the waters receded continually. So it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and all that water had to go down, had to go down into the earth, and it took a long time for that to happen. And you know, did you know that Noah had a GPS? How many of you have a GPS? You have a GPS? You have a phone? You have a cell phone? You know, there's GPS, you know, one of those apps in here. Noah had a GPS. Let's see what we can find. Uh, hey, where did I put, where did I put the GPS? Oh, here it is. Cool. This is Noah's GPS. What is that? What kind of a bird is that? Raven. It's a raven. That's right. It's a raven. The raven was a GPS. Even for up until the mid 1800s, we have uh, Middle Eastern um, sailors and they use birds for navigation. That's interesting. Now, who put all of that information on in the bird's brain to know where land was when they were in the middle of the ocean? Who put that knowledge in that bird? God put that knowledge in the bird. This looks like a crow. It's a little bit bigger than crows. And on the top of its beak right here, it's hair. You know, some birds have hair. It has hair right here on the top of its beak. Interesting. And so when he let the raven out, which direction did the raven go? went right to land, but Noah couldn't see land, but he knew that land was over there somewhere. Do you remember some other history lessons in the Bible about ravens helping people? Do you remember other history lessons? Do you remember? Yes. What do you remember? <laughs> Did the raven feed somebody? Ravens fed who? Elijah. That's right. You know, they could carry a big sandwich to you. They could carry, these are very, very strong, very, very intelligent birds. So I love this about the ravens. What a magnificent animal the ravens really are. And all the animal, all the birds are very magnificent as well. Here's a ship's log. How many days were they in the, in the ark? Wow, 371 days. This is a very, very long period of time that they were in the ark. And Noah had some other birds too. What kind of a bird is that? It's a dove, that's right. They'd send the dove, they'd come, go out, it'd come back, it'd go out and come back. And one time it came back with an olive, what? Olive branch in its, in its beak. And it said, oh, this is great. It's time for us to get out of the ark. And then God made a covenant with Noah and his family and the animals. Don't forget the animals. And he said what? He would never do what? Never send a worldwide flood again. Now that's very interesting for us. That's exactly right. And you know, this is interesting because, and then in, in Matthew, and, and it says, it says, and Jesus said, uh, and I, it's, some of these words are all uh, flashed out for you. In the days of Noah, also in the days of Noah, also will be this, uh, the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood waters came and it took them all away says also, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Did Jesus believe in Noah? Well, Jesus believed the history of Noah. Of course he did. Okay, and he's just repeating it right here. Interesting. So this is what's going to happen at the second coming when Jesus comes back. It's going to be just like those people that didn't enter the ark. They, would, they forgot about Jesus. They forgot about Jesus. They were doing their own thing, and they were destroyed because the floodwaters came. And you and I, we can be in that same situation if we're not what? If we're not ready, okay, and watching. Hey, this is interesting. What do I have right here? Hey, I've got something right here. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's a rope. It's a rope. You like ropes? I've got a rope. On the end of this rope, it's kind of orange. I painted this orange or red. And uh, this represents, this colored part of our rope, the end of this rope represents our lives. Right now, this is our lives, okay? So uh, I'm probably right in here someplace, maybe I'm with my life. But that's what it represents is our life. Some people are just living for this time, just for this life, okay? Does God want us to live just for this life here on this earth? Oh, no. He wants us to live for how long? That's right, forever, okay? It's called eternity, isn't it? So what do we have right here? My, does my rope end? My rope doesn't end, okay? Well, it ends in that backpack right here. Oh, and we just, we just tied you, eternity into a knot. So there we go. But look at that. Jesus wants us to have what? God wants us to have eternity, doesn't he? He wants us to live with him forever. Could you, could you hang on to that for me? No, no, I just put it. In. It's fine. It's okay. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Look how long this is. Does eternity ever end? 
No, eternity doesn't end. My rope ends, okay? But eternity doesn't end. And God wants you and I to live forever. He doesn't just want us to live for that little end, just for this time at all. And it, it, eternity just keeps going on and on and on. Would you like to trade this life, okay, this much life for all eternity? I wouldn't want to trade for that. It wouldn't be a good thing at all. Not at all. Hey, I've got one more thing here, and then we're going to have to close because it's getting late. But I, I've got something right here. Let's see. Does anybody have a coin? Do you have a coin? Do you have a coin? You gave it all in the offering? That's a good thing to do. Let's see what I've got right here. Let's see what, oh, I've got a nickel. Who wants a nickel? Who hasn't helped me yet? Oh, no, you've helped me. What did you help me with? Did you help me? She helped me, okay. Who hasn't helped me yet? Do you want to help me? Okay, okay, would you like this nickel? Say yes. Okay, come on up here. All right, here we go. Come on up. There we go. All right, so, okay, you can have it. All you have to do is ask for it. Yes, you can. Okay, here you go. There's a nickel for you. Okay, but you know what? I've got something even better for you. You know what it is? It's a quarter. I will trade you a quarter for your nickel. You would you? That would be a good. Would that be a good deal? Sure. Sure. You don't sound very excited. Okay. Or would you rather have? Let's see. Okay. See, so you're 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 really wise. You're trying to get more money out of me, aren't you? Let's see what I get. Oh, let's see what I got. Oh, I got two quarters. Would that be even better? Yes. Say yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So here, put your hand up. Okay. I'll give you those two. Give me my nickel back. Okay. Cool. This is great. Did she make a good deal? She made a good deal. Okay. But I got a better deal for you. You want to see what it is? Okay. All right. Stay right there. All right. I just ordered these. I just ordered these on eBay. Have you ever heard of eBay? Okay. All right. I was, okay, and so I just ordered these. Let's see what we got right here. Oh, let's see. I think I opened the wrong end. Let's see what we got right here. Oh, oh there's oh, something's in there. I just ordered these. This is so cool. Look at that. I love posters. And so I ordered these posters. These are dollar bills. These are dollar bills right here. And what I could do is I could trade you the 50 cents, and I've got a pair of scissors right here, and I could cut, I could cut a dollar bill out of here, out of my little poster. You can give me 50 cents, and I can cut one of these out, and you can have a dollar bill. You want to trade? I don't know. You don't know? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, let's do, let's do this. Let's ask the congregation, okay? So they can vote. So how many of you, what's your first name? Lana. Lana, okay. How many of you think that Lana would be, uh, it'd be a good choice for her to trade her 50 cents to two quarters for one of, one, of, one of these one of these dollar bills. How many of you, raise your hand if you think it'd be a good trade. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Okay, so not very many people think that that would be a good trade. So, um, so you're, you're refusing, right? Or, or you want it still? You want, this, you want one of these anyways? You don't care? You don't want to make money? Or do you want to lose money? How many think, okay, that's boy. How many think she would lose money by trading 250 cents on two quarters for one of these dollar bills? How many think she would lose money? Most people think you would lose money. Okay, so you want to lose money? No. No. Okay. All right. So so go ahead and go ahead and keep your 50 cents. Okay. No, no, it's yours. It's a gift. I gave it to you. There she goes. But she made a good decision, didn't she? She got 50 cents. She didn't have a dime. She didn't have a nickel. I gave her the nickel. She traded the nickel up for 50 cents, right? Then I was trying to give her more money. I was trying to give her a real dollar bill. She refused. These, Lana, these are real dollar bills. They're real. Here, check it out. Look at the serial numbers. Okay, let somebody else look them up. Okay, there you go. All right, check it out. Those are real interesting. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of the people at the time that Jesus came to this earth. Did they think that he was the Messiah? A lot of people didn't think that he was the Messiah because he didn't overthrow the Romans. He didn't set up his kingdom on this earth. They lost sight of what the Old Testament prophets were talking about, and why he came down to this earth. Isn't that interesting? How many times do you and I 
put God in a box. This is God, okay? Can we put God in a box? We can't. We can't put God in a box. Interesting to me. So we need to be very, very careful because those people, they made a bad decision. They rejected him and he was the real son of God, which is very interesting. Are those real? Yes, they are real. They really are real. That is very interesting to me. Wow. Well, okay, it's time for us to close. You know, and John said, Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way that you and I can come to the Father is through Jesus. Remember the ark? Only one door of the ark to be saved. Jesus is the way, is the way. And he says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. And that's exactly what I want. I want to be hugged by Jesus. He's waiting to hug you and to hug me. And he does, doesn't he? His spirit, his spirit can come into our lives and he can hug us, which is very real, very, very real.